Welcome back, I'm Imkra Marpaung and I'm still with the CEO of Garuda Indonesia, Pak Irfan Setia Putra, to talk about the perspective of 2024 for Garuda Indonesia. So, you mentioned earlier about uh, adding more flights. Let's talk a little bit about the Hajj pilgrims that just passed. You know, it requires a lot of airplanes and then how to get there. What was the challenges and then how it went? Like, how, how, how was it? Well, uh, I think a lot of people forget that Uh, we are the only airlines who has experienced running Hutch operation, and this year the Hutch operation is is the, the the most complex operations because number one is there are around 220,000 pilgrim. We are divided between us and Saudi Airlines, so we are flying around 109,000 thousand in just a very short time, and coming from nine. Embarkations around Indonesia, so it's a very complex uh, operation. The difference between this year also compared to several years ago is that the plane that we are using is mostly a rental plane, yes. where normally majority of the plane is all use that we are using on regular basis. Yeah, so. This creates a, a little bit challenge where we find out that some of the planes are uh, broke down oh. in such a way that uh, and there are several delays uh, as a result of that uh, breakdown of the plane. Yeah. Uh, you, everybody heard about maybe the engine issues in Makassar. Eh? That plane actually uh, Boeing 747 uh, and fly 450 Passengers, so to handle that situations, we need to put two of our white body plane, which is the Airbus 330s, to handle that pilgrim to fly to Jeddah. Okay. So you can imagine by uh, taking down two mm, white body plane from the regular operations. The impact for the regular operation, while at the same time the delay is still popping up in the for the Hajj operation. So uh, that's number one issue. Number two issue, lots of people heard that we have miss slot, <laughs> around 46 miss slot. You used to have, actually we are asked to have a slot to fly back from Jeddah to Jakarta to Indonesia, but somehow. Uh, We don't get the slot, and the slot was being given in Medina. So the pilgrim that supposed to fly out from Jeddah has to travel to Medina to fly out from Medina. So based on the agreement or our commitment, that creates another cost for us because we are providing hotels. For transit and transportations, meal and so on and so on. But I said to the team, don't worry about the cost. Eh? I think because making sure that the pilgrim are having uh, better service uh, uh, is uh, the most important thing. So this year also we put additional staff in uh, the nine embarkation and also in Jeddah and Medina. So last year we make a little bit changes on the way we serve the people on the on, on, on the flight. Yeah. So I talked to the to the to the cabin crew. Anybody who wants to go to the lavatory, please assist. Because most of them have never flown before, and maybe most of them do not know how to use the lavatory. Uh, so assist them, told them every step to do, and even ask them. You, if you want me to secure the door, if you don't want to be lock the door, I'll, I'll be more than happy to to to, to wait for it. Yeah. Uh, some of our cabin crew even help them inside the lavatory. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Because most of the most of the material gym, you know, uh, is coming from cities where, which maybe hasn't fly ever in their life. Yeah. This year we add more people. Uh, On every embarkation, every flight out, and every flight in, we ask around six to eight people to enter the plane, just to do only one thing: help the passenger 
to take out the baggage Thanks. from the luggage bin. Because the height is, for me it's okay, eh? I'm one MT, eh? for me it's okay. Eh? But for most of the uh, pilgrim, especially those who's the elderly, and it's, it's very challenging, it's very challenging. Eh? So uh, they, 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 they saw it. Uh, we also put more and more uh, wheelchair. So in all embarkation, we provide 30, almost 30 wheelchair. For sure, there will be a list of people who has to be on wheelchair, but we also be okay if somebody doesn't want to walk and then feel tired and want to be guided by, by on the wheelchair, that's okay for us. So we do as much as possible as our understanding to provide a better service for the passengers and the pilgrim. Yeah. So, but eventually this year was one of the worst year for us in the managing the delay. Uh, it creates a lot of problem. It increases our cost. Uh, but I always say to everybody that the responsible person for this situation is the CEO. This is me, not anybody, no, no, uh, not anybody in the company. It's me. So it's quite challenging, the hard yeah. Well, but I love it, like how you put that little touch that make the experience difference, like just helping our elevator, sort of bringing down the, the luggage. That's very simple much thing. Yes. Simple thing, but important for. Right. All right. So one of the thing again, the experience for Garuda Indonesia is always the the main thing that people are looking for. What can people expect from Garuda Indonesia in 2024 in the sense of, I don't know, culture or their food or maybe some technology advancement maybe? Yeah, so two things. Yeah. We are focusing uh, internal and external. Yeah. For, for, for internal first, we are finalizing this year, hopefully, uh, the fundamentals of uh, what we call an airline operations. Yeah. With all the things happen in the past, I think we all agree in Garuda that we should set up a proper fundamental so whoever runs the company in the future can just continue and then focusing on new areas rather than the basic fundamentals of operation of an airline, which is basically making sure that every plane that we fly should make money. Uh, so that's the main idea. Uh, the second one is we start recruiting again, for especially for uh, the cabin crew and also for the ground staff. Yeah. So we now hire a young generation of Indonesians uh, for these two areas so that we can have a continuous regeneration of the team. Yeah. Uh, that's on the internal side. External, for well, uh, we are opening new routes. Like everybody knows that we fly now daily to Doha with collaboration with Qatar Airways, and that is in, uh, make a uh, lots of airline interesting to uh, to to follow what we are doing with Qatar, because the fact is that Indonesian market is huge. Uh, after China and India, I think the third largest market is uh, Indonesia. We are also now uh, finalizing our joint venture with Singapore Airlines. So joint venture is not uh, setting up a company together for, with Singapore Airlines. Joint venture is basically making sure that the road between Jakarta, Singapore, Surabaya, Singapore, and then Pasar, Singapore, is uh, it's a collaboration uh, action between us and Singapore Airlines so that we don't need to kill each other anymore. Yeah? <laughs> Collaborate in, because we are playing in the same segment, market segment, that I do believe that uh, it will benefit uh, both companies, Garuda and also Singapore Airlines. Uh, we are for sure looking for another new routes, yeah? but uh, for domestic market, we are making sure that we increase the frequency. And also the most interesting thing uh, for inter uh, domestic market is actually the new capital city, IKN. Yeah. So that's the area for the business. And for sure other areas, what I would like to share today is about our initiative on the food. <laughs> the fact, uh, so the background on the food is this, yeah. Uh, we know that we are not a hub airlines. Yeah? We are not like Singapore Airlines, Qatar, Emirates, or Etihad. 
and we do realize that majority of our passenger, including international flight, is Indonesian. So, so we need to make sure that we bring the Indonesian way in our food. Yeah. For instance, the snack. For instance, if you fly Garuda less than one hour, normally you get sandwich. I don't think sandwich is our our main food. So we try to provide new uh, snacks. Yeah. Uh, replacing sandwich, we just uh, test it and the feedback was fantastic from the passengers. We call it what we call the uh, local snack. So we have now uh, initiative in what we call Garuda Rasa. Garuda Rasa. Rasa. So there will be signature Indonesian dish okay. and then thematic local dish and then the third one is the local snack. Yeah. One is the most interesting thing is about the in signature Indonesian dish and I am always proud to tell everybody that you can now start enjoying nasi kapau in Garuda flight. Yeah. But uh, rest assured that we are going to fine tune uh, because you can't bring the nasi kapau from Jakarta and then uh, let the people eat from Amsterdam to Jakarta. Yeah. So we are working closely with our partners in Amsterdam to provide uh, this nasi kapal or some of the people say nasi padang in the in the, in, in our flight from Amsterdam to Jakarta. Yeah. The intention is very simple. Yeah. There's, there's going to be lots of Indonesian flying to Amsterdam in Europe. And after one week, two weeks entering Garuda, flying back to Jakarta, hopefully they can directly sense the padang food, yeah, which everybody loves. Yeah. Is there, is there a reason behind the, the nasi padang or the nasi kapal on the flight? Like, yes, that's like, seems so clinical, like it's like such an important part of the menu. Is there like a story behind that? Uh, well, everybody likes nasi padang, nasi kapal. Uh, I was in one flight to Bali. There is no plan for me to eat on the flight uh, because I have a, a dinner arrangement in Bali to my local uh, favorite. Uh, restaurant there, but then the cabin crew offered me nasi kapo. I said, let's try. And it's bloody fantastic. Yeah. You can, yeah, there's, there's no way we can have that kind of experience of eating nasi padang at 30,000 feet. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. That's, that's nice. I mean, again, Garuda is always about the experience. So that, that's a nice experience we're going to try. Well, best of luck for you for the Thank 2024. You. We look forward again the next time we're here. I hope I'm going to get. Uh, Good news, just like the first quarter of the 2024, it's better than year on year last year. Thank you. Bye, Evan, thank you so much for being here on C today. That was our conversation with the CEO of Garuda Indonesia, Pak Irfan Setiaputra. I'm Indra Marpaung, signing off for right now.